Hi everyone and welcome back to our online multiplayer series. This series we've been covering how online multiplayer works with Unreal Engine 4. Uh, the first half of this series I'm focusing on how online multiplayer works in general and uh, networking and so forth. And the second half we'll go through the process of how to get players connected to each other and into each other's games. So in this episode I want to cover two things. The first thing is going to be the net load on client setting what it is, how we use it, and why we use it. And the second thing, and the bigger thing, is variables, how to replicate variables and uh, the rep notify system, how that works. So the main thing we're looking at today is this wall here with some text on it. And I've told it so that this wall will generate a random number every second, okay? And if I go to my client's view, you can see it's doing it on the clients as well. And you'll notice that the numbers aren't synced, okay? Now, the reason why they're not synced is because these are not replicated yet. They are individual instance uh, local uh, actors that are separate from each other. They have no idea how to communicate with each other. They're not connected in any way whatsoever. So our job today is to get them connected. How do we get them synced up uh, and uh, efficiently working? But before we do that, I want to go through, as I said, the net load on client setting. So net load on client is a setting we find on our class uh, defaults, and you'll find it in replication settings. Now, by default, it is set to net load on client to be true. And what this means is that when the map loads, this actor is going to load for all the connected clients. Okay, regardless of where they are, how relevant they are, it's going to load it all up. So as you saw, all the clients there had it. If I turn this off and click compile, you'll notice something a bit strange here. See, the clients can't see it now. It's gone. So what does that mean? Well, as you can see, it's still there. It's invisible. So what can we do about this? Well, first of all, we've told it to be not, lo not loaded on client, but we haven't told it to replicate it. So if we tick replicate, now this is going to now use relevancy to determine whether or not it should be replicated. And I've turned down my net cold distance so it's a, a bit more easy to see this. And uh, it's indicated by this sphere collision around it. And um, actually let's make it so we can actually see this sphere collision, that'd be useful. Like so. So this sphere collision here is the indicator for when we are in relevant distance. Okay, so this is client one. And as I walk near it, you'll notice it will pop into view. And that's because my camera in my viewport is now within that relevancy range. So now it is loaded it up for that client. So this is quite useful if you're dealing with something like a, a large map. And you don't necessarily have to load up everything for every single client because some actors, some players may not actually reach some parts of the map. Okay, so it makes no sense for them to load up those assets um, because they may not ever actually see it. So there's no point in doing that. But we still have that issue of the numbers not being synced. As you walk away, as it becomes not relevant anymore, it will disappear because it's not relevant anymore. Okay, it's not loaded on the client. So let's move on to the um, replication of that number. So why is it different for every single person? Well, the reason why it's different is because this code here uh, on begin play, set time by event, and then update. And the update is just getting a random uh, float in a range between zero and 10 and setting it to a variable and then just telling that variable to change the text. That's all it's doing. But you'll notice none of these are replicated at all, not doing anything like that. They are um, just bog standard events that are happening on the actor. So it, every, all three of them are running this code. So each of the three have slightly different starting times for this set time by event, slightly different random streams and uh, seeds for the uh, random floating range. So everything's a bit different. So how can we get this synced up? Well, one thing we do know about is server is king. Okay, so all the code that the server runs is the boss. 
So what if we told this code to only run on the server? Okay, let's do that. So on begin play here, we're going to do the switch has authority node. And this node is very simple. All it does is say, if it's the server running this, go this way. If it is the client running this, go this way on the remote. So authority means the server, remote means the client. So this switch here is basically saying, if it is the server, do set time by event and therefore it will do all this. Okay, so we can do that. Let's have a look what happens now. So the server, you can see the numbers already changing. If I go to one of my clients, the number isn't changing at all. It's not coming up at all. So we've got the code only working in one place. That's good. We want that to be in charge, but it's not filtering that number through to the rest of the clients. Well, how can we do that then? So when you are replicating stuff, you have the main option for replication up here for the class defaults, but you can also you will also need to and can do uh, replication on individual components and individual variables. So if I click on my random float here and tick on replication to be replicated and click compile, look what happens now. So we've got 0. Point, oh, sorry. So we've got that value there changing around. And as I get close to it, nothing's happening. So the variable is changing, but we can't actually see it. So to demonstrate that, if I put a tick in and go a random float out and print string that random float, we'll see the client come up in a second when it makes it relevant, the numbers be the same. Okay, notice the numbers are the same. So that is working, but it's not updating it. That's because the server is the only one running this update code. So what we can do, we could put this on a tick event and tell it to set the text to this on the tick event. But as we all should know, the tick event is not very good for this because it's a waste of resource, okay? It takes up a lot of um well it's ticking all the time and changing the value all the time when it doesn't need to so is there a better method yes there is so there's also when we click on a variable replication option for rep notify and when you change it to this you'll notice one little thing happen in the functions you'll see on rep random float so it auto generates a function for you saying on rep underscore and then whatever the name is of your variable so what is a rep notifier? A rep notifier is a way for it to basically tell all the other clients that, hey, this value has changed. And that's it. And it will do something when it changes. And that do something is on this function. So the do something on that function is this. So if we take this code here for set text and take that out of there and put it on, on rep random float and plug in our random float variable what's actually happening now is let's go to the tick event now we don't need that what's happening now is the server is running the timer and it's updating the number so it's setting the so the server is in control of the number then because it's set to notify see so set with notify it's telling all the other clients hey replicate this and notify them of it so it's notifying them with this function and it'll call this function on all the connected clients and the server so that they are all aware of what that is so as the clients become relevant they will call this and be aware of what the number should be so hit play so here we got the number generating for our server and as I come into view you'll notice the numbers are now synced if I go to the other client synced again and you can see all three of them are now synced perfectly and if i leave and come back so it becomes unrelevant or irrelevant sorry and then go back in that rep notifier will kick back in and it'll basically resync up 
So what is the actual point of this? Why would you ever want to do this? So let's think of an actual practical case. Imagine if you've got, um, let's say, a, a, a door opening, okay? And the player A on one side of the map has opened that door. Now, player A wants to see the sound effect or see the animations and hear the sound effects and particles, anything it needs to do to make that look as good as possible. But you don't need to replicate that whole entire process to every single person. You only want to replicate the actual final point to the, everyone else when they actually get to see that door, if they get to see that door. So that's when we want to use multicast versus rep notify. So if we had the update here, um, call in a, uh, let's do, for example, a custom event here. And this will be a multicast uh, effects, whatever it may be. We'll, we can call that on here on the server. And this will be replicated on the multicast. Now multicast will then do, this will do like the sounds, animations, whatever it needs to do to do what it wants to do. Multicast will only affect those who are relevant to it. Okay, so only the ones relevant to it will actually see and hear and do all that things. If you're on the other side of the map, you don't need to hear or see or do anything like that. You don't have to waste resources and then loading up all those animations and sound effects if they're not going to experience it. So those people only need the rep notify. And that's when you'd want to use each of these different tools. So in my doors episode last uh, time, you saw the multicast being used. Um, door animation would be fine for that, for that one player that's there, but player B who comes in way after, sees the doors already open, they don't need to write about the animation of it, they don't need to write about sound effects of it or anything like that, it's already open. Another thing could be um, a weapon spawning, for example. The weapon spawn may have a cool particle effect or, or sound effect or something like that happening when it spawns. Not all the players need to know that, so you multicast it to those who are relevant, and then uh, those who aren't relevant will get just simply rep notified, hey, this has changed, sync up. And that's it for rep notify. I'll try to explain it as best I can, but if you do have any more questions, please leave a comment below and I'll try and answer them as best I can. In the next episode, we're going to continue with some more examples of using replication for various in-game uses. So we're going to go through the idea of attacking and showing how to uh, attack and deal damage and share that damage across using everything that we've learned in these past few episodes. So if you want to watch that episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Daily, and just one dollar will get you access to that video plus many others. Big thank you to all of my patrons and my YouTube members for their continued support. Uh, none of this series or any of my other series would be possible without you guys, so thank you so much. You are what keep this channel running. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss a single episode as they get uploaded. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.